While we've been watching through some of the posts going around on social media about the Black Lives Matters movement, I've noticed a lot of comments from people in my um, suburban community that we don't have those problems here, so there's no need for us to protest here. There's no need for our grocery stores to close down. There's no need for us to react on the level that there's getting a reaction around the country. And um, I felt like we had a voice because we've experienced some of the racial comments towards our family over the last 10 years, um, living in Parker, Colorado in, a, in Douglas County. Uh, Douglas County is 82% Caucasian with a 1.49% black population. We've just noticed since we moved into the community that people didn't know how to approach our family, how to talk to our family. Um, they had lots of questions and curiosity about our family. Things like, where did you get your kids from? Are they adopted? Um, I had one gentleman at a garage sale come up to me and say, it's really nice what you're doing for those types of kids by taking them in. Um, we've had people ask us what part of Africa did they come from? Just various comments that even though they seem innocent and curious, they're so hurtful. And they come from a place of naivety. They come from, um, they come from a place of white privilege where people don't even realize the things that they're saying to people um, and how hurtful they are. My kids have experienced the same kinds of comments at school. Um, when they see them at school, they have made comments about the color of their skin. A lot of it was done in curiosity from the perspective of a child, but it doesn't hurt whether it comes from curiosity or whether it comes from um, a place of, of hate. It's the same pain. Um, they've been asked uh, if their skin had chocolate milk poured on it. They've been told they could go roll off, roll, roll around in the snow and get the brown off their skin. They've been told that they can't go to someone's birthday party because they're black. They've been told they can't play goalie because that's only for white kids. They've been told um, that they can't sit at a certain table that it was only for white kids. They've been told that they've been called the N-word, which was the most painful part of any of our journey was the day that, that the N-word got dropped on my sixth grade son. Um, they have faced more than they should have to face. They should be able to go to school and not be judged by the color of their skin or be, have comments made to them because of the color of their skin. When my oldest was in second grade, um, I got a phone call from the teacher about a month into school. The kids had been studying the Civil War in class. So it was new vocabulary for the kids, new vocabulary about slaves, about the difference between black people and white people. And as they were observing and looking around the room, they noticed and saw the differences in people's skin color, maybe for the first time. Maybe they hadn't been educated on that at home yet. But uh, they took that to the playground and they were playing a game at recess called Civil War. They were calling it Civil War. And um, the white boys who were friends with my son decided that he should be the slave because of the color of his skin. So using like a jump rope from the classroom, they had tied a leash around him and were leading him around the playground playing slave with him. And she was the one who discovered it and she was mortified and called me to tell me that she didn't know what she was gonna do about it or how to handle it, but just to let me know that it was not okay and they would stand up for it and they would do their best to change the thinking of the minds of the kids in the classroom. Um, that same year, she brought all the second grade classes together and she used the analogy of a white egg and a brown egg. She put all the kids in front of her and asked them the difference between the white egg and the brown egg. And of course, they just said the colors were different. The shape was the same. And when she cracked them open, they saw that the inside was the same as well. So that analogy has stuck with these kids and it's stuck with me through time that um, we all have the same insides, but our shells come in different colors. Yeah, as I'm an educator and I'm a teacher and I, I deal with the same kinds of things in my classroom and I always try and take the perspective that this is a teaching opportunity because if a, if a kid is at a place to make a comment like that or if a kid is at a place where they are making uh, racial discrimination against somebody, then they, they need education, they need to be taught, they need to be shown a different path. So honestly, it's never angered our family. It hurts, but it has never angered our family. We've always taken it as an opportunity to teach and educate others that these kids are no different than anyone else. We're all the same. I mean, I'm white, my husband's black, my kids are brown.
we still live our life no differently than the neighbors next door to us in our community. I have this really unique perspective as a white woman because I, I was raised no different than most of the white people uh, in, in this community. And, and I know the white privilege I've lived my own life with. And it wasn't until I was married to a black man that I began to see what he experiences and what he goes through. Um, he's been pulled over multiple times going nine miles per hour over the speed limit. I go 20 miles per hour over the speed limit sometimes and I'm not getting pulled over. He's had his card confiscated from him at Costco and I had to go pick it up because it had my picture on it. Um, we, when we flew into our country, we had the same thing in our suitcases and his got confiscated and I walked right in with them. There's, there's tangible things we experience all the time and I didn't see it until I saw it through the lens of being married to it. It doesn't mean I get it because I don't experience it myself, but I've watched it intimately happen to the people I love. And, and it's, it's time for people to start saying that even if you don't understand, even if you don't experience it, you're listening and you're, you're trying to make a difference. You're trying to understand the people who do have a story. You have to hear the people who are saying it's not okay anymore, that they've endured this long enough. And you have to, you have to open your mind to think, what have I done? What little innocent comments have I made? What, what, uh, what prejudices have I taken into conversations with people of other ethnicities? What, what assumptions have I made based on the color of someone's skin or the, the culture that they come from or the way they live their life? If you're sitting there listening and you think that your kids would not make these comments towards my kids, neither did the parents of the kids who made them. We all think our kids are beyond that. We all think that our culture has arrived at this place where we're accepting each other. We're, we're all shocked when we hear these things. I'm shocked when my kids come home from school and tell me that another racial comment was made to them because I think we've, we all think we've arrived past that point, but we haven't. And I'm, my story is to tell you that you have to analyze and be intentional about teaching your kids. It can't be an assumption that they know how to respond or react to to different situations and it's being modeled by us as adults it's being modeled by the people walking up and making naive comments to our family or asking curious questions that have so much racial discrimination underlying in them even with well-intentioned people it comes off so painfully to the people who receive it not everything my family experiences is is difficult or painful. These are isolated in instances over, you know, a 12 year period since we had our kids. And this community, this, this Parker community has been so loving to our family. They have been there for so many things for us and uh, surrounded our family in so much love. The typical comments we get from people is how beautiful our family is and how special and unique our children are. So I don't want anyone to think that we just experience racism because we really don't. Um, they're isolated instances, but they're the ones that stick with you over time because of the pain that they bring.